I'm Rick Johansson, and this is the Iron Echo Design Channel. Today we're gonna to do an Inkscape tutorial. I've had some requests for more intermediate level stuff, so this one I thought we could do. Another request was for something under C, and I actually wanted to do this number right here. This is heavily inspired from the movie, the Disney Pixar movie, Luca. There's actually a scene where the creature is gonna go up to the surface, and so I wanted to recreate that. So that's the inspiration of this. And we're gonna go over some basic skills with Inkscape. I'll still take it step by step. It's just that the amount of tools being used in one tutorial, I'm gonna put this in the intermediate category. Let's begin. As you see here, I brought in some color palettes here. This is just to speed things up. If you're gonna follow along, I'll put the color codes in the description below. And let's start by grabbing the Create Squares and Rectangles tool and draw out a rectangle. It can be vertical, horizontal, any way you want. I'm gonna build our composition off of this and then stamp out the final project in the end. Now red's not gonna work for the ocean. So we'll start with one of my favorite tools, the linear gradient. So for our base color, go to eyedropper, we'll choose this deep blue. And this right here is the linear gradient. That's how you activate it. So click on that. Here's the default. It goes from full opacity to full transparency. If you click on the pencil thing down here, you'll see a bar come up. The square on the left of the bar, if you click on that, you'll see this is your base color. If you click on the circle, it's still that color, but it took away the opacity. So there it is. You can, you can adjust it as you please. Now, I would always do full opacity if you're using this as the bottom of your project. Otherwise, it'll look great when you're working on it, but when you transport it out of Inkscape, you'll have transparency issues. Now, I want this gradient to go from top to bottom, so that's the only reason why I'm gonna show some transparency, just so you can see the effect. So I'm gonna grab the square, take it to the top, that's where I want my deep blue, and then the circle will go down to the bottom. If you hold Control, that'll lock in the straight up and down so you don't have it on an angle. Immediately, I'll go back to the circle and I'll take the transparency off. So now we're opaque from top to bottom. All right, so let's put the, the break between when you're looking up towards the surface of the water is gonna be right about there. So you can modify your gradient by adding more stops. So I have my bar. I have to make sure I'm on linear gradient and go back to the pencil. See how my cursor's got these like two nodes? It's like a plus and two nodes. That means I'm adding another stop to the gradient. So I think I want it right there. I'll double click and then I can choose. So I'll go to eyedropper. Since I'm cheating, I know this is the color I want. Now that's too dramatic. Let's soften it. Let's add another stop in between the top and then this water line. Double click again and I'll eyedropper with this one. And then you can move it. You can move them so it's softer. And you know, I don't really want to see that hard line. Right about there is pretty good. Let's tweak the deeper water too. So I'm on my linear gradient, pencil, the bottom most part of the gradient. I'll go to eyedropper, this deeper blue. It's subtle. And then maybe we'll add one more in between somewhere right there. Double click. And I pre-selected that color. All right, that's a good start. Let's add some ripples as if we're looking up through the water up to the surface on the top. To do that, we'll use another one of my favorite tools, the Draw Calligraphic or Brush Strokes tool. It's this old quill type pen. Click on that. Now there's a whole bunch of presets. It doesn't matter exactly how you set it up, but let me show you how I do mine if you're trying to replicate this perfectly. So I'm on no preset for width. I have it on 2.0. For thinning, that actually takes into account how fast you move. So the faster you move, the more it thins, like it's actually like a real pen. For mass, I take that down to zero. Angle, if, you, if you're really precise, you can like adjust the way, if you had a real quill pen, what the actual tip looked like. Don't know, I'm not, not gonna mess with that. For fixation, zero, caps, we'll try one. That actually is how it starts and ends your, your line. And then tremor, this is the most important one. I want at least 10 because I have to have it rough. Again, it doesn't matter exactly what it looks like, but you want it to have a stroke that's something like this. That actually reminds me, this is actually a fill. Even though I'm drawing a pen stroke, on my stroke, you want it to be a, a no stroke. Otherwise, it'll actually put like another color around it. So for stroke, nothing. Fill will be, I'll try this color down here. So I'll change it to this color. I don't want any of these. And what I'm going to do is make one really long object so then I can manipulate it as a one whole, duplicate it, change it, change the opacity, the blur, and make the effect. So here we go. I'm gonna just draw 
my ripple, come back and forth, just kind of zigzagging through. So that looks rough, but that'll do it. And now let's affect it. So we'll change the opacity, blur. Let's compact it down. I'm gonna stretch it out. Okay, we'll start with that one. Now to cheat and go faster, I'll do Control D, which duplicates it. I'll just change the direction. These are directionals. You see how it keeps trying to click? It's trying to attach it to a node. I'm gonna turn off this magnet with the electricity that's snapping. Turn that off so I have more freedom to move it around. Plus I wanna change it so it's not apparently a copy. Take a look at that, that's good. Try another one, Control D. This one will widen and really stretch it. That looks good there. One more, Control D, change the direction again. I think I'll blur the top even more. Take the opacity down, do one more. Okay, so I've never been scuba diving, but I imagine if I was underwater looking up, it might look something like this. All right, let's move on to making the illusion of light piercing down through the surface. So grab your Bezier pen tool, and it doesn't matter exactly what your shape looks like. We're gonna blur this considerably. I just wanted to cover part of the top and part of the bottom. So for color, I have it set to uh, this light blue. It'll be in the description below if you want this color code, something like that. Now, if you wanna be real precise and you don't like this shape, it's gonna blur anyway. Go to Edit Paths by Node, and you can move each node so it has more of whatever you're going for. But for our purposes, <laughs> look at that, get flipped around. Yeah, for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. It's gonna get unrecognizable pretty quickly. So for opacity, I'll bring it down until it's just a little bit of a haze. And for blur, see what's happening there? I'm just trying to get an, a hazy area that's, cr that's crossing over. So we're gonna have, like it's a cloudy day, maybe a couple beams of light are coming right down through. One way to make the glistening points where the beam of light cuts through look brighter is to slightly darken this top part here. So I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and draw a box down to the break in the water line. And for the color, I have it just set on the original top color of the gradient, which is this one right here. Go back to linear gradient, but this time I'm gonna keep the translucent bottom. So I'll take the top here, take the bottom, and this is gonna darken the top. It's a little too dramatic, so instead I'll reduce the opacity. So this just comes down to personal preference. I can go very subtle like that, or you can keep it dark. Let's go in the middle somewhere, maybe around 50% and see how that works. I don't like how I can see a stronger break in the line there. So what I'll do is I'll double click on it and see how my gradient's gonna to go to transparency off the edge of my object. I'll bring it up. There we go. See what's happening there? All right, so let's make some quick ripple points. I'll grab the Create Circles tool, just draw an oval. We'll make that full white, full opacity. Now to manipulate this shape, I'm gonna to go to Edit Paths by Node, Path, object to path, and that'll give me some nodes I can move around. So I'm gonna elongate it here, pull this forward, give it a little bit of a bulge. It doesn't have to be exact, just something more organic than a straight oval. Let's scale this down, drop it into place. We'll do two different effects on it. So first I'll do Control D to duplicate it. This will be a blur, which kind of brightens it, and then I'll Control D that blur and change that, I lost my color, it's a purple. So when the sun hits the water, it refracts and gives it just a little bit of a purple glow. I'll take the blur to 50%, expand my purple, and I'll take the hierarchy down a step so it's behind the haze. I think that looks okay. So one other trick, if you have a whole bunch of things going on, I'll, I'll zoom back out. I've got overlays, I've got my gradient. If you unclick everything and hold shift, you can capture smaller components like that. So I've got it there, I'll do Control D, Control G. So I duplicated it and then grouped it. Cause now I can use this and make all the rest of my points without having to draw them individually. So off camera, I just took that original glow point, I duplicated it, arranged it in the way I thought it would look okay. And now we are ready to go to the next part. So remember how I did this glow point that crossed over from the top to the bottom? That is this object here. I'm now gonna go up one step in hierarchy so I can recapture that top glow there. Okay, let's make these beams of light. So with the Bezier pen tool, I'm gonna to create a box, almost like a rectangle, 
coming straight down from the sides of one of our glow points. That is going to go to the color of light blue. It'll be in the description. First, we'll go to opacity, but you know I love my linear gradient. So let's choose linear gradient. It's going to adopt that initial base color. If I go to pencil, I can change the direction of the gradient. And here we go. So we can have it go from full opacity and we'll have it kind of just vanish down here. So from here, I'm going to take this further and I'm going to blur it some more. So opacity will come down. Blur. Now I think that's a pretty good start, but I want to have some striations. So one way to do that is I'm going to do Control D to duplicate it, and that will bring out. If you if I zoom in, you can see there's another line there, but I don't want to have it be the same width. So I'll take the nodes and bring it in, and you see how I made another beam of light. It's the same amount of transparency, but by doubling it up, it actually increases the opacity. Let's do one more of those. Control D, put that beam up against the end. Maybe we'll go even lighter. All right, so there we have a beam of light. I do want to make sure it's not on top of my glow point. So let's collect the whole thing. So escape will deselect everything. Shift, I just want to grab my points here. I can shift collect this one. I'll group all of that together. Let's go down one step. It looks like it's still on top of that glow, so I'll go down one more. That looks good like that. Okay, so we have our first set of beams. I'll control D, take that, and let's go ahead and cheat. Maybe this one won't be quite as intense. Now, because I duplicated it, it's going to be the same point in the hierarchy, which is a good thing. Duplicate that again and again and again through the magic of editing. I did a time jump skipping ahead to the very last light beam. I did tweak the transparency a little bit more. I wanted to see good striations. So let's complete that part. Now let's make the subject of this composition. I'm going to make an abstract free diver, not a scuba diver with a tank, just a diver with the really long flippers. This is going to be a 20 second special. I'm going to draw it quickly using just triangles and basic shapes because I want to show you this tool here. It's called tweak objects by sculpting and it's nasty. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Someone or a team of people spent a lot of time making this tool for us, and I think it's a great feature. So let's go with the Bezier pen tool. Let's start with the head, torso going down to the front leg. There's the arm, hand, back leg. And let's make some oversized swim fins. So I'll just go huge swim fins. Maybe that's too big. Right there, control D, duplicate it, reverse the direction. And there's our free diver. Maybe the head's too small. Okay, so to make this effect work, I'm going to group everything. So select everything, go to path, union. That puts it all into one object. And for our tool, it's the settings. You're going to go to tweak objects by sculpting or painting. The width is 5. That just shows you the, the area that's going to be affected. Force is 30. The setting we want is roughen, this thing right here, roughen paths. And the most important setting is fidelity. So the lower the number, the more it simplifies everything, the higher the number, the more true it is to this monstrosity. So let's go. So I'm going to select my object. I've got my tweak objects by sculpting. I'm going to just hold the mouse button down and watch what happens. Do you see how it took my rough boxy thing into an organic, almost alien-like feature? That's what I'm going for. It's a free diver, but it might just be a creature. But I'm going to save this for later just in case. I'm going to do Control D to duplicate it, and let's put it back into our composition. Where should we put this guy? Down in the depths below? Let's move him closer heading up to the surface, just like the inspiration for this composition. Thanks to Disney and Pixar for the movie Luca. I hope this was helpful. Usually I would create a stamping box and clip out a final project, but I kind of like it taking up the whole screen here. So we'll leave it at this. If you have any questions or ideas for future tutorials, leave a comment below and ciao.